Good morning, everybody. This is your host, La Plenum Knight, and I'm here to talk about both Silent Hill and Resident Evil's showcase. Let's see. I believe um, uh, Konami's Silent Hill showcase happened on October 19th. Yeah. Yeah, it was October 19th. And then as for Resident Evil's showcase, it was pretty much a day um, after Silent Hills, which is kind of um, kind of ironic too. Wow, uh, two of the biggest horror well-known video game franchises um, colliding around the same time. But yeah, everybody, both Silent Hills and Resident Evil's uh, showcase um, happened around the same time. And I thought uh, I decided to go ahead and review it, you know? Um, I'm going to be using Resident Evil 4 to uh, talk about it. Let's see. Mm. You know what? I'm just going to play on normal mode, everybody. Yeah, Resident just normal Evil mode. Four. I just think that's a lot easier. Okay. Special. Uh, I'm just gonna go with normal. I'm gonna be uh, skipping the cutscenes too. Alright, there we go. Um, oh man, I kinda forgot how to play. Uh, okay. Alright, that's all that matters. As long as I remember how to shoot, that's really... Um, yeah, that's really all that matters, which, god damn, man, I can't believe, um, Resident Evil 4 is about to be remade, which, I'm gonna save that when I talk about Resident Evil's showcase, but, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think I should pretty much start with, um, Silent Hill's, uh, showcase. Let's see... Well, okay, before I talk about, um, Silent Hill's showcase, um, if you guys, uh, remember, um, not too, uh, long ago, I think it was, um, back in, what, uh, in the beginning of, um, October, uh, Konami, uh, actually had, um, a showcase, um, that had nothing to do with Silent Hill, but, um, it was pretty much, uh, just a bunch of random stuff. Um, I kind of forgot, uh, that's how forgettable and boring the showcase was. I think most of it, um, had something to do with, uh, just Yu-Gi-Oh! and, uh, Mega Man. Um... Not to diss on any of the Yu-Gi-Oh! or Mega Man fans or anything, but, um... To me, it just wasn't all that interesting, you know? So, that's the reason why, um... I thought, uh, that was probably one of, um... The worst, um... Video game showcases. Um... And me and my uncle were just like, what the hell were they thinking? Because keep in mind, um, when uh, I saw uh, Konami's uh, showcase, um, it was uh, me and my uncle, we actually waited um, at like, what, 6 a.m. Uh, in the morning, which... Jeez, I don't know why they have it so, um, early, uh, for America. But yeah, technically, um, me and my uncle, we stayed up all night just to see, um, Konami's showcase. And, um, after, uh, we got done watching their showcase, one of the biggest dis uh, disappointments or complaints that we had was, um... They didn't really show any of the good stuff, you know? Um, they didn't have... Oh, hey, Huey. Alright, trying to save the dog. Um, but Konami's showcase was overall uh, pretty boring. 
Um, they didn't have any Metal Gear. They didn't have any Silent Hill. Um, they, uh, overall just didn't have anything good that piqued, uh, me and my uncle's interest, you know? And it was like, we kind of, um, suspected it. Like, we were kind of prepared to be disappointed. But, um, we didn't think it was gonna be that bad, though. Um, yeah. So, after the disappointment, um, with Konami's showcase back in the beginning of, um, October, um, we didn't get what we want, and for a second there, me and my uncle just thought, well, okay, um, that's that, um, what more can we expect? And then, all of a sudden, um, almost around the same time, uh, Capcom had, uh, their showcase, um, that's, uh, when all of a sudden, uh, Konami, out of nowhere, announces a Silent Hill showcase, and I'm just like, well, okay, um, even though the Konami, um, showcase was pretty disappointing, at least they have some Silent Hill. And of course, you know, um, we end up watching, um, the Silent Hill showcase. And, look, I wanna, I wanna make something perfectly clear, okay, everybody? I don't like Konami. Konami has made some pretty dumb decisions in the past, especially when it came to letting go um, Hideo Kojima and not allowing him to finish Metal Gear Solid 5, you know? So, it's no secret that I really, really don't like Konami, okay? But, for the Silent Hill, um, showcase, if we've learned anything, or if me and my uncle learned anything from, uh, watching, um, their, uh, showcase in early, um, October, we just decided, you know what, they're not going to make, um, any new, uh, good, uh, Silent Hill games, or at least, um, we highly doubted that there was gonna be a remake of any Silent Hill, you know? So, really, me and my uncle, we were pretty much just expecting the worst, you know? Uh, even, uh, before we saw, um, the Silent Hill Showcase, we all thought that, um, yeah, they're not really going to bring, um, their AAA game, you know? It's most likely going to either be maybe a shitty mobile game, or a pachinko machine game, or something, you know? Konami just always had that reputation ever since Metal Gear Solid 5, you know? They always had that, what can they do to make themselves look worse? Or what can they do to make themselves even look like the even biggest bastards than they already look, you know? So... Me and my uncle, we had our doubts, you know? Um, we were just expecting the worst of the worst, and they weren't going to, uh, find any ways to, uh, redeem themselves. But you know what? Thankfully and happily, we were all wrong, okay? Because not only, um, was this Silent Hill showcase, um, good, but it was actually very good. Like, it was more than good. 
the Silent Hill showcase just... It wasn't just okay, you know, or it wasn't fine. It was actually pretty damn good, you know. And I'm happy, um, for, uh, Konami and everything. But I still don't like them, you know. Like, I'm still gonna remain skeptical. Um, but I'm, at least I'm happy to say that, um, that they did, a. Uh, pretty good, uh, for this, um, Silent Hill, uh, showcase. So, what, uh, did they start off with, um, with this, uh, Silent Hill showcase? Well, the very first thing, uh, they decided to show off was the Silent Hill 2 remake, which is weird because, I mean... I can't help that the fact that they should be, um, they should start by remaking the first Silent Hill game, um, uh, because keep in mind, uh, the original Silent Hill, they didn't have, um, a remake, or they never, um, had a remake. I mean, yes, uh, technically, um, the first, uh, Silent Hill game, um, had a remaster, but that was about it, though. Um, it really wasn't a full-on, um, remake, though. Um, and a lot of people say that, um, from what I understand, that Silent Hill, um, remaster is... Not exactly good. Um, that Silent Hill HD collection in general was pretty bad. Um, there was a lot of missing features, um, missing details that, uh, the PS1 games didn't even have. But technically that wasn't really a remake though. It was just, it was supposed to be um, enhanced, uh, resolution ports, you know, and they failed at that, so that wasn't good. But anyways, yeah, the original Silent Hill technically never had, um, a real, uh, from the ground up, um, remake, just like Resident Evil's remake, you know? So... I thought, um, I do think it's a little bit odd how, um, the first Silent Hill game that they are remaking, um, from the ground up is its sequel, and that is Silent Hill 2. And don't get me wrong, I mean, even though I have never played a Silent Hill game before, I am, uh, fully aware of its history. I've seen plenty of, um, Let's Plays and speedruns. I, I know what happens, everybody, okay? I know the whole summary of the story, and I'm fully aware that, um, uh, Silent Hill 2 is, um, what many people consider to be the best Silent Hill game. Um, I know some people do say, oh no, the original Silent Hill was the best one. Or hell, I even seen a good handful of people say, oh no, Silent Hill 3 is actually the best one. But nah, many people, um, would say Silent Hill is, um, would technically have to be, um, the best Silent Hill game. And, you know, I mean, as a person who has never played a Silent Hill game, I, I can see that, you know? I respect people's opinions. So, in a way, it kind of makes sense um, how um, they're remaking Silent Hill 2 first. But that just kind of makes me wonder, though. Is Konami, uh, planning on, um, uh, just remaking Silent Hill 2? 
Or do they also plan on um, remaking uh, 1 and 3? Uh, and you know what? I kind of have a feeling that they they most likely will, but not anytime soon, though. So, in a way, um, yeah, I understand why um, they're remaking uh, Silent Hill 2 first. Um, and based on what we've seen, it looks amazing, everybody. Um, it actually looks really, really good. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. And from what I understand, um, I believe that it is going to be console exclusive to, um, the PS5, which... I know that, um, a lot of people are not happy about that. But yeah, uh, this Silent Hill 2, uh, remake is going to be on, um, the PS5 and the PC. But you know what? I do admit, though, it should be on Xbox. You know, I don't really get this, uh, console, um exclusivity anymore, especially from a third party, but, uh, I have a feeling that it's eventually, uh, going to be, um, on Xbox someday. But for now, I guess, uh, Konami just wants to, uh, very specifically, um, focus on, um, the power of, um, the PS5, you know? But yeah, the Silent Hill 2, uh, remake, um, looks, uh, very, very good, okay? Um, it doesn't look like a complete waste of time. Um, it actually looks really sick, man. The fog it looks really, really good. Um, everything looks a lot darker now. And I know that, uh, especially on Twitter, um, people are, uh, are, um, expressing that they're having problems with, uh, James, um, Sunderland's, uh, face. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, too, but isn't it James supposed to be 29 years old? But for some reason, he looks like he's in his, I don't know, in his late 30s or um, in his uh, early 40s at best. So I thought, uh, I do think it's a little bit odd, you know? I do think um, Konami made uh, James's face, um, especially when he's looking in the mirror. Um, he does look a lot older, okay? I will say that. I don't know if Konami was trying to, like, showcase, um, his wrinkles or something like that, or they were just trying to show off more detail. But I will say, uh, James definitely looks, um, a little bit uglier, you know? <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, but you know what? Other than uh, James's face, uh, he still looks really, really good, though. Um, I, I mean, the game looks really, really good. Uh, the rest of the game looks really, really good. James um, looks like he has to put on um, some moisturizer uh, cream on his face. But other than that, everybody, I can't believe I'm actually I'm gonna say this, but I think I actually will get it. I will most likely will uh, be picking up um, Silent Hill uh, to remake. Um, I'm debating if I should pre-order it or if I should get it on the first day. I don't know. Um, but I'll most likely get it, everybody. And even though I don't like Konami, even though I still do not like them, even though I ended up boycotting, um, 
Resident Evil. No, not Resident Evil. Fuck. Uh, even though I ended up boycotting um, Metal Gear Survive, I think I'm actually I'm going to get the Silent Hill 2 uh, remake, everybody. I don't think I'm going to boycott it. I think um, the Silent Hill 2 uh, remake is definitely going to be worth my time and money. And from what I understand too, um, technically it's not really uh, going to be um, by Konami. Um, Konami is... Uh, they are specifically um, are uh, hiring a completely different team uh, to work on um, their uh, Silent Hill stuff. I forgot what they're called. Uh, yeah, I forgot uh, the name of um, the developers of not just the Silent Hill 2 remake, but pretty much all their other um, Silent Hill games. And I'm going to uh, pretty much uh, talk about that um, in a sec, uh, because I guess uh, the next um, game um, I can go ahead and talk about is, um, uh, hold on a minute everybody, I'm so sorry. Uh, Silent Hill Townfall? Yeah, okay. The next game I might as well talk about is Silent Hill uh, Townfall, and there really, really isn't um, too much um, information on uh, Silent Hill Townfall or the rest of um, their other Silent Hill games that I'm willing to talk about. But yeah, um, Silent Hill uh, Townfall was also announced, and I've been trying to find um, any uh, information um, that I can, and from what I have been able to find is, it looks like it's most likely going to be um, a uh, an interactive game, uh, most likely. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but based on the trailer, though, I mean, it doesn't look like that, though. Um, it looks like it could be, um, a third-person, um, over-the-shoulder type game. Oh, and that's another thing I forgot to mention about the Silent Hill 2 remake. It is a smart move how, um, it is third person. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a third person, uh, over the shoulder, um, and it's pretty much going to be, um, a third person shooter, you know? And that's good, you know? I mean, if it worked out uh, so well with uh, the Resident Evil remakes, then yeah, I think um, it's definitely going to uh, garner um, a new audience. Um, it is uh, modernized enough uh, for a new audience. And I feel like um, it's going to be the same uh, with uh, the other Silent Hills. But Silent Hill Townfall looks um, interesting. But uh, again, though, we don't really know too much about it. Okay, the next uh, Silent Hill um, game uh, that they end up announcing is... Um, Silent Hill Ascension, which, I don't know, man, I mean, in my opinion, this is just me, but I don't like the title, um, alone, um, I mean, Silent Hill Ascension, um, okay, but anyways, yeah, they, um, revealed, um, Silent Hill, um, Ascension, and from what I understand, or the information that I was able to gather, um, 
it kind of like is starting to look like that um it might be a multiplayer silent hill um yeah they're making it out to be it's going to be um either a co-op silent hill or um i real i kind of hope it's not another um asymmetrical silent hill but at the same time it is um it's kind of starting to look like that, though, which is weird, though, because if they're going to uh, make um, another um, asymmetrical um, horror game, then it's not going to last, people, okay? I'm going to tell you guys right now, if uh, Konami is planning on making an asymmetrical game, um, yeah, I don't really see, um, too much hope for it, okay? Um, I hope, uh, Konami doesn't make it an asymmetrical game. Um, I can understand, uh, making, um, a co-op game, but, um, if they decide to make this an asymmetrical game, it's gonna turn out pretty terrible, okay? Um, I think um, it's gonna be a very huge um, misstep um, if they do that. Because, I mean, let's think about this, okay? Let's think about the rest of um, the asymmetrical uh, game um, that's currently out and isn't exactly doing very well. Um, I like Freya 13th for an example. It was a good asymmetrical game, but the reason why um, Freya the 13th ended up failing is because the developers lost the license to do any more updates and DLC. Um, What's a, a very successful one, Dead by Daylight. But you guys gotta think about um, why Dead by Daylight is still successful. The reason why Dead by Daylight is so successful is because of its constant updates, okay? The reason why Dead by Daylight is still going strong is because they keep getting licenses from other horror IPs, you know? Dead by Daylight is basically a horror's, um, a horror fan's dream come true, being able to play all your favorite monsters, all your favorite killers, um, all your favorite uh, protagonists from those licenses. And what's even more interesting is uh, you can play as Pyramid Head and uh, Cheryl uh, Mason um, in there, or Heather Mason. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that uh, Konami um, even gave um, the license um, to Dead by Daylight to put in Pyramid Head, um, Heather Mason, uh, the nurse from the first Silent Hill game, uh, Civil Bennett, and they even managed to put James uh, Sunder Sutherland in there, you know? So, that's so weird, but you know what? It kind of makes me wonder if, um, if Konami purposefully um, put uh, their um, Silent Hill stuff in Dead by Daylight as a tease. Uh, for uh, what is to come um, in the Silent Hill um, uh, franchise. And I don't know, most likely they did, but at the same time it's like, well, okay, if they're gonna go ahead and um, allow uh, their license to be in uh, Dead by Daylight, then it's like, um, 
why make your own um, asymmetrical game uh, with uh, the Your official um, uh, Silent Hill uh, license. But I remember that's what I thought too with uh, Capcom allowing uh, their stuff, um, allowing Resident Evil uh, to be in Dead by Daylight. I mean, think about it. Um, you gotta keep in mind, um, I believe, uh, no, wait. Was it Resident Evil Resistance that was asymmetrical? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Resident Evil Resistance. Um, but yeah, that's what I thought too when Capcom uh, gave the license um, to uh, their Resident Evil stuff um, to Behavior Studio. And it's like, well, okay, um, Capcom, if you're going to allow um, Dead by Daylight to put Resident Evil stuff in there, then who's going to want to continue to play um, to play Resident Evil Resistance, Welcome. you know? So, I have a feeling the same what thing is going to happen with Silent Hill Ascension. I have a feeling um, Ascension is just going to be another asymmetrical game that everybody is gonna play or at least all the silent hill fans are gonna play for like i don't know maybe two or three days maybe a week and for those of you that honestly want to give it a chance maybe like a month at the most just for nobody um, to play it ever again and only for the servers to either be shut down what are you or playing? at the very Is most they're probably gonna do like maybe uh, one last um, update cash. or something what are you and um, that's pretty much the end um, for um, uh, Silent Hill Ascension, you know? So already, Silent Hill Ascension uh, sounds like it's gonna be a dud, but we'll see though, you know? And even when it comes to other asymmetrical games like Predator Hunting Grounds, uh, Predator Hunting Grounds isn't doing bad, but it's not doing great either, you know? And another, um, case is, um, the Evil Dead, uh, game. Uh, yeah, um, Evil Dead the video game. It's not doing, uh, bad either, but it's not exactly doing well, you know? It's kind of taking a little while, uh, to get some updates. It still feels like, um, an early access game. And so it's like, I don't know, man. But I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see, though. But right now, uh, Silent Hill Ascension, yeah, it doesn't really look good. Um, I don't think it's going to last that long. And the last uh, Silent Hill game uh, that they uh, showcased was... Um, Silent Hill F? Huh. I mean, I admit, at first I thought the title was a little bit silly, but no, I mean, based on what they showed for Silent Hill F, it actually looks really, really interesting to me. Um, Silent Hill F, um, looks like, um, it has a lot of potential. It's actually going to be a Silent hill game that takes place uh i forgot what time period but somewhere um in the hundreds um and it takes place in uh japan i think yeah um i think uh it looks really really good everybody i like how um silent hill f um takes place in a um, older, interesting time, 
and I like how um, I like how uh, they're uh, changing it up a bit. I like how um, they um, are uh, giving it a new setting and a new time period that isn't just um, Silent Hill in America, you know? So, that's pretty cool. Um, I think um, Silent Hill F um, is going to be uh, good. But my only problem is they didn't really show too much. But based on um, that CG uh, trailer alone, um, yeah. It looks pretty good, everybody. Um, I think um, uh, it has potential. Um, but that's, I guess that's one complaint I have about the Silent Hill showcase. They didn't really um, show too much. And um, it's like, well, okay. Pretty much all they had to show was just the Silent Hill 2 uh, remakes uh, gameplay, you know? Um, so, I guess that's one complaint, but at the same time, I kind of uh, understand it, you know? Everything is still too early, everything is still um, in production, and... Um, I'd say that, um, it's gonna take a while. If they ever do decide to remake Silent Hill 1, uh, or 3, everybody, those remakes are not gonna happen for a very long time. Um, at the very most, um, it's gonna take at least, uh, I don't know, um, well, I guess another complaint um, I have uh, about this showcase is there's no release dates. Um, yeah, they didn't give a release date for Silent uh, Hill 2 Remake. Um, they didn't give us any release dates for pretty much anything. Uh, so that's kind of a big concern. Um, a lot of people want to hope that, uh, the Silent Hill 2 remake is coming out next year, but <laughs> I doubt it, everybody. That's not gonna happen, alright? I have a weird feeling Silent Hill 2 is at the very most gonna come out, um, in 2024. I mean, I hope it comes out next year, man, and if it does, at the very most, um, it's most likely going to come out um, by the end of uh, 2023, uh, uh, you know? Um, but I don't see it coming out um, like uh, around Resident Evil 4 Remake or, um, uh, you know, anytime soon from there. So I guess we'll just have to uh, wait and see, you know. But other than that, at least Silent Hill 2 Remake looks good. And if they do plan on um, remaking Silent Hill uh, 1 and 3, that's not gonna happen for a very long time, okay? At the very most, I think that's gonna happen uh, probably in um, the year 2030 or somewhere in the 2030s, which that's gonna be um, quite a while. But other than that, everybody, what are my thoughts on the Silent Hill Showcase? It was actually pretty good, okay? Even though they didn't really show too much, um, even though they didn't really give out too much uh, release dates, um, it was still a good showcase, you know? At least they showed something. Uh, 
especially compared to uh, F Konami fashion, you know? It was actually a pretty solid show, and like I said everybody, I do plan on um, getting uh, the Silent Hill 2 remake, so once it comes out, um, I can't wait to get it. Uh, is there, a, is there anything else I can say about the Silent Hill showcase? I guess another thing I could go ahead and mention is, I didn't like how um, they also mentioned the Silent Hill movie. I mean, and I get it, I understand why they did, because it's gonna be another Silent Hill movie, but I mean, uh, I don't know man, I mean, to me, if you're gonna have a video game showcase, and have it specifically be about games, you know? But I don't care about the Silent Hill movie, okay? Whatever they plan on doing with that movie, I might not even watch it. But other than that though, uh, the Silent Hill showcase um, as a whole was pretty good, you know? Um, and I guess uh, that's pretty much about it. Um, alright, how long have I been streaming now? How long did it take me to talk about the Silent Hill, uh, showcase? Uh, okay, 42 minutes, alright. Next, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about Capcom's Resident Evil Showcase, because I have a lot to say, um, especially, um when it comes to the Resident Evil 4 uh, remake. But yeah, uh, okay, so Capcom's Resident Evil Showcase um, was in um, October uh, 20th. Um, I even marked on my calendar. Um, it was at 3 uh, p.m. And what do I think of uh, the Resident Evil Showcase? It was awesome, everybody. And you know what? Even though I liked the Silent Hill Showcase, I have to be honest, Resident Evil's Showcase was definitely um, better and far superior and showed off all kinds of things compared to the Silent Hill's um, Showcase, you know? And at least we got some Resident Evil uh, 4 Remake gameplay, you know? Uh, so, yeah, both me and my uncle uh, saw the Resident Evil Showcase, and I like how um, it starts off um, as, uh, like, at first they made it look like they were gonna show off um, the Resident Evil uh, Village um, VR, but um, it turns out that wasn't uh, gonna be VR. Um, it turns out it was just um, the hub uh, for the Resident Evil uh, showcase. And of course, you get to hear uh, Duke um, talking to whoever was in the POV um, perspective. Um, but they started off uh, showing off um, Resident Evil Village stuff. Um, they showed off uh, the Resident Evil Village um, third person mode. And it looks pretty good. Um, I like how uh, it pretty much just looks like um, the Resident Evil uh, remakes. Um, you get to see um, one of your last uh, long gun weapons um, on your back or on uh, Ethan's back. Um, so yeah, I thought um, that looked pretty good, but I don't know, man, I mean, what's the point of uh, Capcom even releasing a demo um, to their third-person mode? 
Like, I don't get that, because this uh, update, it's going to be released in, uh, what? Um, this third person mode, it's going to be released in just one more week. Um, yeah, that's really not too long from now. Even when it was first announced, it's like, I mean, we only have to wait for, like, ten more days. I don't really understand why they're giving out a demo or to see what it's like. I mean, I can wait, people. I can wait. I'm not going to play the demo, nor am I going to, uh, um, fill in my PlayStation 5 with, uh, more gigabytes. I'm gonna wait, everybody. Uh,. For the third person mode, I do plan on, um, beating, um, uh, Resident Evil Village in third person exclusively, uh, on Twitch. So yeah, everybody, uh, please go follow me, um, on Twitch. Um, I don't know when am I going to stream, uh, Resident Evil Village in third person. Most likely after I beat, um, Shadows of Rose, and, um, after I'm done, um, live streaming Resident Evil, uh, 5, um, with, uh, my bestie, um, Sunflowers. Yeah, because I plan on, um, I do plan on live streaming um shadows of rose um on my youtube channel and i do plan on doing a resident evil 5 uh co-op a live stream with um a special friend of mine uh tifa um who goes by uh sunflowers so that's gonna be really fun but yeah that's when I plan on playing um, Resident Evil Village and um, third person uh, over at Twitch as soon as I'm pretty much am done um, doing those two streams. But anyways, I guess the next thing um, I might as well talk about is um, uh, Shadows of Rose, uh, aka um, the, the Resident Evil Village DLC. And it looks really, really good, man. I mean, I didn't... They didn't really show too much gameplay. Um, it's kind of starting to look like it's going to be more, um... Story-driven than gameplay-driven, you know? I don't... I don't think, um... Rose doesn't look like she's gonna be doing a whole lot of, um... Gun-wielding, you know? But... I could be wrong, though. But... In the trailer, they did a showcase. You are gonna be able to use her powers. And... I thought, uh... That was pretty cool. But how often are you going to be able to use her powers? Is it infinite? Do you have to do a certain thing in order to activate her powers? And they did show off some new, um, enemies? Yeah, they do show off some new enemies, but it kind of makes me wonder, are those our actual, um made up enemies or are those enemies that actually exist somewhere in the RE universe um I guess we'll pretty much um see soon enough but you know um it's just a question that I have but anyways Shadows of Rose um DLC it looks really good I do plan on uh live streaming it um, as soon as it comes out, which I don't know what time though, but I'm hoping it comes out during the day, um, like at least at, uh, 3, um, p.m. Uh, specific time, because that's usually when 
I'm uh, good to stream, so yeah, guys. Um, I think um, it's gonna be pretty good. Um, what else did they show? Oh, uh, another thing um, that they showed uh, was um, Resident Evil uh, Reverse. Um, yeah, that's another thing that they show it off. And to be honest, man, now that uh, we got a little bit more um, context, I think um, uh, Resident Evil Reverse um, is going to be pretty damn um, decent, you know? I'm not going to say it's going to be good, but I mean... At least it's better than nothing, you know? I mean, Resident Evil uh, Reverse uh, looks like it's going to be what Resident Evil Umbrella Corps should have been. Or, uh, yeah, what Umbrella Corporation should have been. Um, it looks like um, it's actually uh, going to be okay, you know? And it doesn't look like it's going to be another um, asymmetrical game either. So that's the reason why I'm excited about it, you know? Um, the reason why um, I'm now looking forward to Resident Evil Reverse now... And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's going to be a multiplayer that I'm going to be playing for years to come or anything like that. But I am at least I'm excited to try it, you know? Um, I like how you get to play in the baker's house. Um, I like how um, uh, you get to have more customization options. Um, similar to uh, what the Umbrella Corporation had to offer. But it was just poorly done, though. Um, it just... Uh, wasn't really good enough to have all those customization options. So knowing that Resident Evil Reverse um, is using the RE engine and knowing how we're going to be able to play on um, the Baker's family's house and the RPD, then it kind of makes me wonder what else um, do they have in store, you know? Um, but even though it's not an asymmetrical game, though, my only concern would be, um, well, how often are they going to update it, though, you know? Or how, uh, how many updates are we going to get? Because if they're just going to go ahead and release Resident Evil Reverse and then, um give up uh, later on and that's about it then that's not going to be good you know that just means uh, they were in uh, confident which is understandable because before uh, they showed more of Resident Evil Reverse nobody wanted this you know nobody cared for it nobody uh, demanded it um, it was just one of those things where it's like, yeah, um, no one cared, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, I hope, uh, they, uh, um, spend some quality time on it. Um, but if it turns out, uh, Capcom, um, ends up um, abandoning uh, Resident Evil Reverse, then, oh well, I mean, that's fine. But um, overall though, I am kind of am looking forward to Resident Evil Reverse though. But is it something that I'm gonna play for a long time anyway? No, most likely not. Um, I am most likely am still going to be sticking to other online multiplayer games like Dead by Daylight and Fall Guys. Um, because yeah, those games are currently um, my go-to uh, 
multiplayer games, um, still, even to this day, um, so, um, yeah, but Resident Evil Reverse looks, um, really good now, you know? Um, I was one of those people that said, you know what, they should just cancel it, you know? Um, but now that it's been, uh, because keep in mind, um, originally, um, Resident Evil, uh, Reverse was supposed to be bundled in, um, with, uh, with, uh, Resident Evil Village together, and technically it still is, um, it is still coming out for free, uh, with Resident Evil Village, but knowing how it's been, um, over a year now, um, since, uh, it was originally supposed to be released, and it kind of makes me wonder how much content, um, was added, and knowing how it was supposed to come out, um, uh, with Resident Evil Village, and that just makes me wonder, shit, how little to no content was, uh, Reverse, um, was actually going to be, you know? So, yeah, um, I think, uh, that's, uh, pretty much about it. Um... I guess, uh, the next topic, um, I can go ahead and, uh, talk about is... Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Is it really the last topic, too? Hold on a minute. How long have I been streaming now? Uh, let's see. I've been streaming for, uh, 57 minutes? Holy shit. Okay, um, I guess, uh... I guess before I talk about the Resident Evil 4 remake, um, was there, did I have any problems about the Resident Evil showcase? Mm, not really. I kind of find it a little bit strange how they didn't even mention, uh, the Resident Evil Village, um, VR. Um, because you would think that they would, so I thought that was a little bit odd how they made no mention of, um, the Village VR stuff, and that's okay, though. I mean, I'm not going to, um, try it anyway, because, um, my vision is poor and can't handle VR, um... I get a little bit, uh, motion sickness from VR, so it's not like I was excited about it anyway, but it still would have been, um, cool, um, to show it off anyway, uh, for those who are excited about it, but, um, yeah, there was no, um, Resident Evil, uh, VR stuff in here, um, they pretty much talked about, uh, Resident Evil Village and third person, and, um, uh, Shadows of Rose and Resident Evil Reverse. So, everybody, I guess the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Damn. Um, as I've said on Twitter, um, if you guys, uh, follow me on Twitter, um, I did say that, um, I am still going to be skeptical about it, um, yeah, I am still gonna remain skeptical, um, and there's a reason for that, you know, um, I, g I want you guys to keep in mind, okay? Yeah, I am looking forward um, to this remake, and of course, I have stated multiple times that I'm gonna buy it anyway. Um, but overall, everybody, um, if I had to give my honest opinion now, it still looks really, really, really good. Um, I think it's at least going to be a fun game, um, and there's no doubt 
that um, this remake is gonna suck, you know? I think, um, at the very most, um, it's at least going to get, uh, maybe a 9? I don't know, I mean, we'll see. Maybe it's still a little bit too early, um, to rate it. But you get what I mean, you know? I never said the Resident Evil 4 remake, um, looked bad. The only thing I have ever said was... It's just not going to be that faithful compared to, um, the OG Resident Evil 4, you know? But after seeing that gameplay trailer, I want to believe it is going to be more faithful, but I still have my doubts, people, okay? And let me explain why, because again, the reason why people have been so iffy when it comes to these Resident Evil remakes is because of what they did to, um, the Resident Evil 3 remake, you know? The Resident Evil 3 remake was a massive dis- Oh, excuse me, everybody. The Resident Evil 3 remake was a massive disappointment, you know? I mean, it was too short, it could have been more. They removed the clock tower, they removed uh, the park. Nemesis doesn't even chase you all that long, or at least not in the same way. They shrunk uh, Raccoon City. Um, and it overall just wasn't the same, you know? It wasn't really a faithful remake. The Resident Evil 3 remake um, was more of a reimagining, you know? And uh, after the Resident Evil 3 uh, remake's reception, I believe deep down Capcom knew they messed up on um, the Resident Evil 3 remake, you know? It wasn't faithful, and it really wasn't a real remake. So after uh, Resident Evil um, 3 Remake's reception, that's when um, most people uh, ended up becoming concerned um, ever since uh, the Resident Evil 4 uh, Remake uh, rumors um, uh, were even announced. And, again, guys, I never said that the Resident Evil 4 remake was gonna suck. All I've ever said was they're most likely are going to ruin it. Because keep in mind, I still, to this day, I do like the Resident Evil 3 remake, but in the sense that it was fun, though, you know? I enjoyed the Resident Evil 3 remake for its fun factor, you know? Um, but I have always said that, yeah, it's not really a good remake, though. Um, and it would have been better if it was just a standalone Resident Evil game, um, instead of being a remake. But... Now that I saw the Resident Evil 4, uh, gameplay video, I want to believe it's not going to be like that. I want to believe that, um, it's not going to be, uh, uh, better off, um, being its own thing or Resident Evil thing. Because the village does look, um, pretty awesome, okay? Uh, the way the village looks, it looks 100% accurate, um, to the OG Resident Evil, you know? I have a feeling, um, they're aware of, uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake's reception, and this time they're going to be a little bit more faithful, uh, towards the Resident Evil. Evil 4 Remake, you know? But, uh, other than that, everybody, uh, based on what I saw in that, um, in that showcase, 
It looked pretty damn awesome. It looked so good. Um, especially with um, today's current um, graphics and hardware. It actually looks um, super stunning, you know? I like the way uh, the village looks. Um, I like the way uh, Leon looks. I like the way Ashley looks. Um, but here was one big surprise, though, selling? that um, I did not expect. I honestly did not expect um, Ada to be different. And I was just like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, what? Huh? We're getting a different Ada? Uh, what happened to, uh, the previous actress, um, who played as, uh, Ada in the Resident Evil 2 remake? What happened to her? I thought, um, she was pretty good, you know? Um, so that kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, I don't know why they couldn't get the same actress, because... They got the same actress uh, to play as Leon in the Resident Evil 2 remake, so why not um, Why not for the Resident Evil uh, 4 remake with Ada? Um, I don't know, but here's the weird thing though. The weird thing is, the reason why that threw me off so much is because if you played uh, Dead by Daylight, it's literally the same model, too. Um, hell, even if you... When they showed uh, Resident Evil Reverse... Um, yeah, it was the same model and everything. It, it at, at least um, used the same likeness of um, that model, you know? So I'm just like, so let me get this straight. They were able to get the likeness and the model from the Resident Evil 2 remake for Dead by Daylight and Resident Evil Reverse, but not for the Resident Evil 4 remake? Like, huh, that's so weird. Maybe the actress uh, that did uh, Ada for Resident Evil 2 just couldn't make it, or... Her schedule ended up getting tied, but I don't know. I still thought that was a little bit odd, though, how they couldn't use her anymore, but they were still able to use um, her likeness, though. So, uh, I don't know. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to uh, judge um, the voice, though. Because I do admit, um, for some reason, uh, the clip, um, that they decided to use, uh, to show off the new Ada, uh, sounded like she stumbled, um, across, uh, some of her lines right there. It was only two lines, but I'm just like, huh, um, uh, that doesn't really sound too good but again though it's just two lines though so i'm not gonna be too harsh on this new voice actress but um in terms of uh the model or uh her figure she actually sounded uh pretty good uh no no not sounded she uh looked pretty good yeah i mean i guess you can go ahead and still um pass off um this is uh ada just um much uh well not much a little bit older so i don't know um in a way i do have uh conflicted feelings about this new ada but she still looks beautiful though she still looks really good um just, um, it just threw me off guard, you know? But I'm pretty sure, um, she'll be fine, though. 
I just don't understand why um, Capcom specifically chose to use uh, that clip of her. Um, is what I um, is what I was wondering. So, uh, whatever though. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. Um, Ada looks um all right. Um, Leon still looks the same. Ashley looks really good. But you know what? Um, when they showed off uh, Lois, though, I was just like, well, okay. Um, Lois, uh, or Lewis, he looks pretty good, but I don't know, is it just me? Or does he somewhat kind of have... Um, <laughs> Is it just me, or does uh, Lewis's mouth um, look a little bit too big, you know? His mouth um, looks a little bit too uh, wide, and he looks like he's going to be a little bit more um, comedic um, in a happy sense, which I guess um, that is an interesting change. I mean, I've uh, seen some people on Twitter say that um, the new Lewis um, looks really, really hot, you know? So, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just something um, I uh, personally have to get used to, you know? But Lewis looks okay, though, you know? He looks like he's going to be a little bit more... Um, goofy, but I guess it will be, um, an interesting change, you know? While I still, uh, in the original Resident Evil 4, uh, I always thought Lewis was somewhat of, um, the mysterious type. Um, this Lewis looks like he's still gonna have that, but in a more comedic sense. Um, they also uh, showed off um, Salazar, and I know uh, some people don't like it, and in a weird way, I kind of don't like it either, but um, you guys got to keep in mind, in the original Resident Evil uh, 4, um, I remember Leon saying something like uh, calling um, Salazar... Um, no thanks, old man. But I always thought he looked just like a kid, you know? I always thought that he looked too young, or... Yeah, to me, I always thought he looked like, um, a first grader. And I never understood why Leon called him old man. So for this remake, it actually makes sense. Um, he actually does look like an old man, and in my opinion, this new Salazar, he looks gross. Like, I'm just gonna be honest, he looks fucking nasty, you know? He actually looks a little bit more intimidating. But you know what, though? I kinda don't like, um, how... They look like they might make him a little bit too serious, you know? Like, I'm hoping that, uh, that, uh, Salazar still, um, has that comedic or comic book, uh, vibe to him, you know? Because that's what made, um, him stand out, uh, for me in the OG Resident Evil, you know? Uh, what made him memorable was because he was goofy, uh, because he was childish, you know? But in here, um, he comes off as a little bit more mature, I guess you can say. So, I hope, uh, they don't change him into this super serious or, uh, dark type of character. I really, really hope, um, he, uh, keeps his, um, immature, um, vibe to him. But other than that, Salazar, um, actually looks, um, 
pretty cool. Um, and as for the chief, the chief looks really good too. But I noticed that he doesn't have his uh, red eye um, anymore. Um, yeah, he doesn't have his red eye. Uh, now he just has one eye. He doesn't have his iconic uh, regular eye and red eye anymore. Uh, he's missing an eye and he's wearing a hat and he's wearing a pendant. So it kind of makes me wonder if they're going to change uh, the way you get through uh, the big double doors uh, to the castle. Maybe you have to steal the chief's pendant instead of his eyeball this time. Um, but I find it kind of uh, strange how they gave uh, the chief um, a hat uh, for his baldness, but they took away, uh, S uh, Salazar's hat. So, they gave, uh, the chief, um, a hat, but they took away Salazar's. So, I thought that was kind of, um, an interesting, um, reversal, uh, type of change. But... Uh, I still notice they haven't showed off, um, Sadler yet. Um, I assume they're going to, uh, show Sadler either some other time, or they're just not going to show him at all, and they're going to save, um, for you to see him until you actually play the actual game. Um... But is there anything I can talk about, uh, gameplay-wise? Uh, yeah, um, I like how you now get to, uh, parry the chainsaw guy, uh, with your knife. I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but it's still pretty cool, though. So... I thought, uh, that was, um, pretty awesome, how... You get to see uh, Leon take out his knife um, and block uh, the chainsaw. Uh, but I also notice his knife has a durability meter to it. But that's so weird though. Um, it's kind of odd how um, the knife um, has a durability meter when in the original Resident Evil 4 um, it was infinite, and you were able to use it anytime you wanted, and, um, you didn't have to, uh, move it in a briefcase. Um, yeah, your knife, uh, was not, um, in your briefcase at all. Um, but the interesting thing is, in the beta version of Resident Evil 4, there was going to be a point where you were going to be able to um, uh, move your knife and put it in your briefcase. So, it looks like um, they're taking some notes from the beta version of the OG Resident Evil 4, and they're taking notes from the Resident Evil 2 remake too. But that kind of makes me wonder, are you going to be able to lose that knife? Is it going to eventually break? Like, I don't know. Um, I guess uh, we'll have to see. Um, I also find it cool how um, the chainsaw guy is also able to um, uh, terraform the village um, by blocking certain playing? paths. Um, I thought, uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, they also showed off, uh, the merchant, and I thought he looked pretty damn awesome. Uh, they showed off, uh, the merchant, um, in, uh, this showcase. And he no longer, he sounds different, too. Um, this new merchant looks like he got a lot skinnier. 
And is it just me, or does this new merchant sound uh, a little wee bit Irish to me? <laughs> um, but if you look closely though, if you look closely at the merchant uh, stuff, um, you can see that he's selling a new weapon called the Bolt Thrower. Uh, not the mine thrower, it's called the bolt thrower, and I was just like, well, okay, huh, I wonder what that weapon is gonna do. But if you pause it though, or if you look closely, I also noticed um, there was the TMP icon. Uh, yeah, so the TMP, it is definitely in the game. Alright, uh, the TMP is definitely going to be in the remake. Um, you can see its icon uh, when you go into the merchant shop. Uh, there's still the yellow herbs. Yeah, you can still uh, collect uh, yellow herbs to maximize your health. And that's another thing too, even the HUD uh, for this Resident Evil 4 remake it looks the same like it does um, in the beta because um, in the OG Resident Evil 4 beta uh, the HUD for your life bar was going to be a solid color um, not with uh, lines on it so that's actually pretty cool how um, they are uh, sort of using um, the Resident Evil 4 uh, beta HUD. Um, <clears throat> another thing too that uh, I have noticed um, about Ashley is there's a part where um, Ashley um, uh, is holding a gun. Um, that was uh, kind of interesting. But I don't think uh, Ashley is going to be able to use that gun, though. Um, I think um, uh, for that cutscene alone, because if you look at uh, the video closely, notice that's uh, Leon's gun, okay? Uh, yeah, that is supposed to be Leon's gun. And because uh, that's Leon's gun, Obviously, I doubt that she's going to take it away from you forever, or for a long time. So, I think um, it's just going to be one cutscene. Um, I have a feeling that cutscene is just going to be like um, a couple seconds long. And it's just going to be uh, Ashley taking away uh, Leon's gun uh, for a split second. And then uh, Leon is just going to uh, get it back, you know? And that's pretty much about it. Um, I don't think um, it's going to be anything serious. But I don't think... Um, uh, when you do play as Ashley, uh, I highly doubt um, you yourself are going to be able to use um, Leon's gun, um, or any gun uh, for that matter. I think it's just going to be something quick, but still pretty cool though. Uh, what else did I notice? Oh, another thing I did notice too, um, was I noticed that, uh, that, um, if you look closely, uh, in the briefcase, uh, and I'm happy they brought the briefcase back, by the way, I am so happy they didn't get rid of the briefcase, but, um, yeah, um, it looks like, uh, um, that was, uh, Marvin's knife. Uh, the knife you use, uh, to block the chainsaw, um, it turns out, uh, that was actually Marvin's knife that you get in the Resident Evil 2 remake. It even says, um, in the small description of, uh, the knife, um, that says, um, 
Leon's uh, go-to weapon. Uh, a weapon that uh, you get when you were in the RPD. And I'm just like, whoa. So that's technically Marvin's knife. But here's the problem, though. The problem with making uh, that uh, uh, Marvin's knife is that means um, uh, Claire's um, uh, scenario is technically uh, the one where she kills William Birkin at the end in the train. Um, that means, uh, it makes, uh, Claire's, um, scenario, uh, scenario B, and Leon's, uh, scenario A is canon. So, I don't know how to feel about that, because you gotta keep in mind, in the OG, uh, Resident Evil series, um... Technically, Leon's, um, uh, canon, uh, scenario was scenario B, you know? Because, uh, Leon, uh, gets to see Ada, um, give him the rocket launcher in the original, um, Resident Evil 2. And, uh, Leon actually gets to kiss her um, in the OG RE2. So knowing that, uh, Leon still has, uh, Marvin's knife, um, then that means, uh, it's, uh, Leon Scenario A that's canon, and Claire's, uh, Scenario B is the one that's canon. Um, so I'm not sure how to feel about that. Or, what it could be is it's not, um, Marvin's knife, um, it's just a random knife, uh, Leon got, um, in Scenario B. So, I'm not entirely sure, um, how to feel about this, but either way, though, in my opinion, I feel like, um, they should have just, um, stuck with, uh, Leon's original knife in the original Resident Evil 4. Which means, everybody, uh, R.I.P. to this knife. Uh, yeah, Leon is not gonna use, um, this knife anymore, uh, to fight against, uh, Krauser, so... Oh well, um, R.I.P. O.G. Um, Resident Evil 4 Knife. Uh, Raid? Oh, thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the raid, Daniel. Uh, how was your stream, um, Daniel Plays? Um, I hope, uh, your stream went well. I'm just talking about, uh, both, um... Silent Hill and Resident Evil's uh, showcases. I'm going into uh, full detail on what I thought about the show. But yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Daniel, for the raid. Uh, party of three. I am. Uh, I'm pretty much. I'm almost done here. I'm just going to uh, talk about um, the Resident Evil 4 uh, remake a little bit more, and then I'm pretty much I'm gonna sign out. But anyways, uh, what else did I notice about the Resident Evil 4 remake? Oh, um, I notice when you go into uh, the first um, house of, uh, of uh, the beginning of the game, um, I reached affiliate yesterday. Oh, cool! Congratulations, Daniel! Yeah! Congratulations, man! That's pretty good. Um, let's see. Hope you make that good money, man. But anyways, yeah. Uh, in the beginning of, uh, the Resident Evil 4, uh, remake video, um, I like how, um, they, uh, added, um, a basement, uh, to, uh, the original house that you go in, and, um, an extra door, too. 
so in the beginning of uh, Resident Evil 4, you know how when you go inside that house and encounter your first uh, villager? Well, it looks like um, in here it's no longer going to be that simple now. Um, it's now going to be you're going to go in the house and um, it looks like you are looking for one of your cop uh, buddies. Because when you go in the house, uh, in the remake, uh, you end up uh, finding um, one of uh, your companion's uh, bodies. So it looks like um, instead of uh, those two um, Spanish uh, cops that wait for you um, in the car and uh, you going to check it out first, it looks like... Um, they are going to be the ones to go in to check it out first. Um, it looks like um, you're pretty much uh, going to investigate uh, where did they go. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, yeah. So uh, now you're going to be able to... Uh, um, pretty much, uh, be wondering by yourself, uh, straight from the get-go. Um, so yeah, um, in the first, um, house, uh, it looks like you're gonna go down to a basement, and, and here's something I kind of, um, not really a uh, dislike, but something that um that kind of threw me off. I kind of don't like how um how uh, you get to sneak around or um, have a crouch button with you. I uh, kind of um didn't really uh, like that. I don't like how they added a crouch button. Because it implies that you're going to be able to do some sneaking around. And I don't really know how to feel about that, man. Resident Evil 4 has never been that type of game to where you sneak around, you know? Resident Evil 4 has always been, um, fast-paced, you know? So... I'm not sure about this whole, um, sneaking mechanic. I mean, I've heard rumors they're going to add, like, a stockish, um, enemy, uh, type, um, uh, enemy in the game. Like, uh, uh, Mr. X in the Resident Evil 2 remake, and Nemesis, um, like in, uh, Resident Evil 3 remake. So, I don't know about that, man. I have a feeling it could be the chief uh, that might do that. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, I have conflicted uh, feelings about that, you know? I have conflicted feelings that we're now going to be able to um, sneak around um, in this Resident Evil 4 remake. But, that's okay, though. Let's see, a featherly, uh, feather friend sending you all the lovely feather vibes with a feather, uh, follow as I go about protecting the travels of the night. Oh, thank you, um, Hyper Knight, uh, Raven, thank you very much. Um, you came from, uh, Daniel's stream? Yeah, welcome, man. Um, I'm still talking about, uh, the Resident Evil Showcase, um, and so far, it actually looks really good. Um, I also thought, uh, the new look on the chainsaw guy was pretty intimidating. Um, I thought he looked terrifying with both of his red eyeballs just, um, bulging, um, out of his, uh, potato sack. Um, I think that makes him look a little bit more terrifying. But you know what? Here's my question, though. 
in this Resident Evil 4 remake, are we gonna be able to just walk around uh, for a couple minutes until the timer runs out? Or do we have to kill uh, enemies um, in order to uh, complete that um, segment now? Um, and are we still going to be able to climb up the, that tower of the village and um, get molotov to but not really die? Are we still going to be able to do that? Um, I mean, it's okay if we don't, but, you know. Um, I just uh, think um, that was pretty interesting. I even like how the shotgun uh, that you get is still in the same area or it's still in the same place um now here is one thing um i uh did not like and this wasn't really um in the video this was uh discovered by ign i think i forgot who the only thing i really really uh did not like is I don't like how you're not gonna be able to save the dog anymore. Um, for those of you that don't know, but in the original Resident Evil 4, you have the option to uh, save this dog out of a bear trap. And if you save that dog, um, that dog will actually come into play later on to help you out um, fight against uh, El Giante. Uh, but if you don't save that dog, that dog um, does not come out to help you. But in the Resident Evil uh, 4 remake, IGN discovered is, it turns out uh, the dog you save is already dead in that bear trap and when i saw that on twitter i was just like well what the fuck capcom that dog was so helpful in the original resident evil 4 i mean you couldn't bring him back and it's like huh well that sucks and a lot of people are currently um are uh pissed off about that a lot of people are saying no um yeah exactly daniel um exactly everybody is saying no this is not a good change you're not allowed to save that dog anymore it, it's already dead but in all fairness though it could be a different dog or maybe you will save a dog but just not in a bear trap i don't know but dude i really really hope um that's not the same dog though and i get it i did um oh wait hold on everybody All right, sorry everybody. But anyways, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I gotta wrap this up um, pretty soon, everybody. But anyways, yeah. Um, I did uh, hear somebody on Twitter saying, well, the reason why they're most likely aren't going to bring the dog back anymore is because that dog was from originally um, Haunting Ground. Uh, that dog is supposed to be Huey. And I'm just like, dude, who cares if it's Huey, you know? They could easily just, um, make a different dog, you know? And the one that's, uh, the dog that's dead in the bear trap is different, but, you know, um, still though. Um, I don't know, man. I just want to be able to save the dog, you know? That's all I really care about, because... We all love that dog, and he becomes so helpful, um, uh, helping you, uh, fight, uh, El Giante. And even though, uh, he wasn't in it very much, 
even though um, the dog only helps you out just one time for that one scene, who cares? I mean, people love um, dogs or pets in video games anyway, so who cares? Um, I just want to see them once, you know, uh, alive. But anyways, yeah, so I'm not really happy about that change. Um, I really hope uh, Capcom comes back to their senses and brings the dog back. <clears throat> but anyways, I guess uh, another concern, everybody, and this will um, explain um, why I'm still going to be a little bit skeptical of uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake. But the reason why I'm still a little bit skeptical is because notice how they didn't show Krauser nor the island, you know? They showed off Ada, they showed off um, uh, Salazar, they showed off Lois, but they didn't show off uh, Krauser or the island. So, the rumors of people speculating that, um, oh, uh, Krauser is most likely, uh, was cut out, or they, the island is not even gonna be there anymore, those rumors still hold some weight because they didn't show it. And don't get me wrong, I know that this is supposed to be a Resident Evil showcase, I know that they can't, they obviously can't show off everything, but, um, god damn it, man. I know they literally can't show off everything, but still, though, I mean, <clears throat> it just, uh, still puts some weight on the rumors that Krauser was most likely cut out, you know? And I hope not, man. I really hope uh, Capcom just surprises us um, by uh, showcasing. No, he is still in the game, just at the very end, though. And I really hope they didn't cut the island, too. Um, God damn, I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> but yeah, I hope uh, the island is still there, everybody. Um, and if the island is there, I hope it's not going to be like, you know, um, you're only going to be on the island for like, um, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or an hour at the most. Because the island was an important part uh, of the game, so, you know. Um, and I really hope they didn't cut out Krauser, man. That's gonna suck if they do, um, if they did, uh, cut out, uh, Krauser. Um, because then who would be to, uh, kidnap, um, who would, uh, kidnap Ashley, you know? Uh, and I like how in the OG Resident Evil 4, it made sense, too, because... Uh, if you remember when you first encounter Krauser, Leon ends up telling him, so you're the one who kidnapped Ashley. And it made sense because, uh, he just figured, obviously, these dumb, mindless, uh, villagers wouldn't be the ones, um, to kidnap, uh, Ashley. So, of course, uh, a human or um, a highly trained um, soldier or a person would be the one to kidnap the president's daughter, you know? So of course um, Krauser would pretty much be the only one to uh, be the one to do that, and it would make perfect sense. So, yeah, I hope um, they didn't cut out Krauser and I hope they didn't cut out the island. Um, but we'll see though, we'll see. Um, let's see, is there anything else I can talk about? Um, no, um, I guess one last thing I can go ahead and talk about are the different um, additions that are coming out. Uh, there's supposed to be, uh, two editions. Well, no, technically three. 
Uh, but there is going to be uh, the Resident Evil 4 Remake uh, Deluxe Edition, the Digital Deluxe Edition, and um, the Collector's Edition, which I admit, man, I, I'm debating if I should get the Collector's Edition, but at the same time, it costs $250. And don't get me wrong, that Leon statue, it actually looks really, really good. Like, very good. Um, I mean, I would pay for the Leon statue alone, but the problem is, man, I mean, that's still a little bit too much, though, you know? So, here's the thing, though, alright? If I cannot get the Resident Evil 4 Collector's Edition when I finally do have the money to get it, then I might buy it. But, let's say I do have uh, the money, um, if I do have enough, and it turns out they're still sold out. If they are still sold out, then uh, I'll just go with uh, the Deluxe Edition then. Yeah, okay, I'll just do that, alright? So really, it all depends. Um, if I finally uh, have enough money, if I finally get $250, and if they're sold out, then they're sold out. Uh, if there's no more Collector's Edition, then I'll just get the Deluxe Edition. But you know what? For the Deluxe Edition, you still do get a lot of... Um, good stuff too, so uh, I'm not gonna lose uh, sleep over it. Despite me um, being um, a hardcore uh, Resident Evil 4 fan, so I, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'll be happy with either one, you know? Collector's Edition or Deluxe Edition. I'm fine with uh, either one of them. But I do admit, though, that Leon statue that comes in uh, the Collector's Edition looks pretty sick. Um, I'm gonna... If I can't get my hands on uh, the Collector's Edition, uh, then I will at least think about getting um, the Resident Evil 4 uh, remake Leon statue by itself on eBay. And I'm hoping for the best it costs, like, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks at the most, if someone decides to sell it by itself. But anyways, guys, uh, and if you're wondering, uh, what, uh, do they come with? It comes with a lot of good stuff, surprisingly. Uh, I don't really dig any, uh, of, uh, Leon's, um... Leon's outfits, but here's the thing though, notice how, um, in the pictures, uh, notice how, uh, oh god, notice how they didn't even show off, uh, any of, uh, Ashley's outfits, um, when you look at the picture for what it comes with in the deluxe edition, they don't, sh they show all of Leon's outfits, but for some reason, all of Ashley's outfits are, like, censored. So, it kind of makes me question, huh, I wonder why. But if you look closely at the shapes of, uh, her, uh, outfits you get in the, in the Deluxe Edition, notice how none of them is the night outfit. So, my best guess is... You're going to be able to hopefully unlock um, Ashley's uh, armored suit uh, just by playing the game itself. And hopefully um, you get to unlock um, Leon's uh, Noir and his RPD outfit just by uh, playing the standard game itself. So that's really cool. I hope uh, Capcom decides to do that, 
And I really hope you get to play uh, in Ada's uh, red dress um, as an unlockable outfit. And I also hope, too, that Capcom gives you the option of uh, which outfit um, do you want to change instead of uh, both at the same time. But here's another thing, though. Um, another thing uh, that I noticed when I saw the Deluxe Edition thing is I noticed that it comes with a season pass, and that just makes me wonder, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, the Resident Evil 4 Remake is gonna have DLC? Huh. Um, that just makes me wonder, is it going to be separate ways? Or is it gonna be mercenaries? Or... both, I guess. Because if Resident Evil 4 Remake is gonna have DLC, I'm okay with that, just as long as it's separate ways, you know? I'm hoping you still get to play as, a, uh, you still get to play Ada's campaign. Uh, I recommend you gain stream cord or ping cord to your Discord server so you can... Uh, okay, Daniel, I'll try. I'll try to look into that. But yeah, right now, um, I currently, uh, don't know how to, uh, do most of that stuff, you know? But yeah, I'll try to look into it, Daniel, um, if I can. Oh, wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? What are you buying? Is that old? There we go. <laughs> Is that but anyways, uh, yeah. Um, and another thing too, um, I do like about uh, what you get in the deluxe edition is. I like how you also get to uh, put charms um, on your guns now. Yeah, you get to put the ammo charm, and you get to put um, the herb charm uh, on your guns. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think uh, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna add some customization options, and. Uh, yeah, everyone, I'm most likely am going with the Deluxe Edition for sure, because I highly doubt I'm going to get the Collector's Edition. Um, and even for the Deluxe Edition, I still feel like it comes with a lot of good stuff. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, also change the color of your briefcases? That's actually going to be pretty sweet. Because right now, uh, you currently cannot change the color of your briefcase in the OG Resident Evil 4. Um, it stays uh, the same color as this. But if you get the Deluxe Edition or the Collector's Edition, you're going to be able to turn it into a red briefcase or a golden briefcase. And I'm just like, well, don't get me wrong, obviously... I wish uh, we could have a platinum briefcase, but uh, gold is good enough, you know? Uh, gold... If I get the Deluxe Edition, I am most likely am going to turn my briefcase uh, gold, uh, if there's no platinum. So, yeah, um, I can't wait um, for those uh, features. Um, I guess another thing too, um, another thing I notice about the Deluxe Edition is you're going to be able to, uh, to, um, swamp, uh, different soundtracks, just like in the Resident Evil 2 remake, um, that's going to be pretty dope, um, let's see, god damn it, I thought I was going to be able to dodge that. But that's alright, though. But anyways, yeah... Tell me, Hubie! Yes! Hey, it's that dog. Come on, Hubie! Alright, uh... 
Okay, come on, come on. But anyways, yeah, I thought that was kind of odd how um, you get to uh, switch uh, soundtracks and uh, sound effects. Um, that's going to be uh, pretty dope, like in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Oh shit, he grabbed me! But that just makes me question, though. Are you just going to be able to, uh... Um... Uh, switch soundtracks, or are you going to be able to uh, switch sound effects either? Because the way it worked in the Resident Evil 2 remake, you were able to do both. You were able to switch uh, both uh, soundtracks and sound effects. So if you're going to be able to uh, switch uh, music and soundtracks for a Resident Evil 4 remake, and I'm hoping for the best that um, they do the same for the sound effects. And you're going to be able to um, switch uh, um, pretty much um, any sound effects that it has now, you know. Uh, let's see. Uh, equip. There we go. But anyways, everybody, uh, what are my, uh, final thoughts on, uh, Capcom's, uh, showcase? What are my final thoughts on, uh, on Resident Evil 4 Remake as a whole? Uh, the Resident Evil 4 Remake looks really, really good. Um, I feel that Resident Evil 4 is still gonna be a fun game, um, but, um, my only question is, is it going to be faithful to the OG Resident Evil 4? Well, I at least think it's going to be more faithful compared to the Resident Evil 3 remake, man. And again, I really, really hope Capcom doesn't remove um, any uh, important parts from the OG Resident Evil 4, but so far, it looks pretty damn awesome. The gameplay looks solid. It at least looks like they're still going to add um, more to uh, certain things and and um, have uh, new features. And yeah, guys, the Resident Evil 4 remake looks really, really good. Um, I am definitely am going to pre-order it uh, in March. And once again, um, if I can't get my hands on the Collector's Edition, then I will pre-order the Deluxe Edition. I plan on doing a live stream and a unboxing video of this Resident Evil 4 remake when it comes out. And, uh, yeah, guys. But overall, this Resident Evil uh, showcase was really, really nice. Um, they showcase the third-person mode for um, Resident Evil Village. They showcase Shadows of Rose. They showcase uh, Resident Evil Reverse and the Resident Evil 4 remake. Um, I plan on uh, live streaming um, Shadows of Rose when it first comes out. And uh, after uh, Shadows of Rose, I plan on doing, um, uh, e yes, Daniel, um, there's going to be a third person mode uh, for Resident Evil Village now. And uh, after I get done uh, live streaming Shadows of Rose um, DLC on YouTube, then I plan on beating uh, Resident Evil Village all over again in third person mode exclusively on Twitch and yeah uh, and then after I'm done beating Resident Evil Village I plan on a uh, live streaming Resident Evil uh, Reverse both on YouTube and here on Twitch and once when the Resident Evil 4 remake um, comes out I also plan on doing a complete uh, Let's Play over on my YouTube channel, and then I'm going to do a New Game Plus over on Twitch. So, 
yeah, everybody. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much about it. Um, those uh, are my plans. Um, I talked about uh, both the Silent Hill and the Resident Evil showcase. Um, and is that pretty much about it? Is there anything else uh, I can talk about? Uh, no? I guess that's pretty much about it, everyone. Um, holy shit, I've been live streaming for two hours? Jesus. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much all I have to say, everybody. I feel like I got everything off my chest. And, yeah, um, a lot of uh, good stuff to come. Um, damn. Us horror video game fans are eating good um, next year, um, along with the Dead Space remake, um, along with uh, the Silent Hill 2 remake, um, and Resident Evil 4 remake. So, is there anything else? Uh, nah, I guess that's pretty much about it. All right, everybody, um, this has been your host, uh, The Platinum Knight. This has been my review for both um, Konami's Silent Hill Showcase and uh, Capcom's Resident Evil Showcase. Um, thank you so much uh, for watching, uh, and uh, thank you to anyone who ends up seeing this later on. Peace out, everybody.